the film, Mission Blue, is really an attempt to share the view. I, as a witness, about what's happening to the ocean. What are the biggest problems facing the ocean? And it's obvious what we're putting into the ocean. The pollution, <laughs> the, the plastic debris, the many things. Also what we're taking out of the ocean. If people don't know about the problems and why it matters, they can't care. We need to communicate to the public is the value of the ocean is our life support system. The ocean keeps us alive. We must keep the ocean alive. We understand that various elements of society, the tourism industry, the fishermen, the government, is, they all have a stakeholder role. But what is often missing are the kids, not only the kids of today, but the kids of tomorrow. It's their ocean too, it's their future, and they're, they are real stakeholders. So the film Mission Blue came about as a result of a wish that I made. The goal was and is to ignite public support for taking care of the ocean, to communicate knowledge about the ocean, but to develop a network of protected areas, hope spots, large enough to save and restore the blue heart of the planet, the ocean. So NASA, in particular, NASA Ames, has had a lot of research in astrobiology, and stromatolites sort of hold a very unique role in that study because they are the, the earliest life form on Earth. They've been around the longest, and the discovery by Phil Playford in the 1950s that they were living in Hamlin Pool just in our, in our own backyard was really quite extraordinary. So I met this University of Miami group led by Pamela Reed and Erica Park, and we went out to um, Western Australia to map these using UAVs. So my work at NASA in Earth Sciences focuses on looking through fluid interfaces, and one of the issues we have from space looking down at Earth is that we cannot actually see things with very high resolution. The fluid distorts what, that picture. And so my, my research is in looking through that and being able to map out these reef structures to understand their distribution, how they adapt to environments, and um, how we could use that technology to look for life elsewhere in the universe. It's an extraordinary amount of data. One of the downsides of getting very high resolution, we're looking at two, two millimeters to five millimeter resolutions over 15 square kilometers. If you do the numbers, that's, that's three petabytes of data um, that need to be processed and, and analyzed. So we have computer vision algorithms that are automatically analyzing those data sets to, to pick out interesting structures for us. So what's living, what's not living. We've made some pretty big discoveries that we can't share just yet, uh, but in, in January we'll have a publication out that announces one of the main discoveries in that these stromatolites are not unique in that around the pool they, they vary in morphology.